So George Kittle lost a bet to 49er center Jake Brendel. Brendel went to UCLA, Kittle went to Iowa. UCLA beat Iowa 20 to 17. It's one of those new Big Ten rivalries. So the punishment for George Kittle was that he had to wear a UCLA helmet during his media availability. Here you go, video of George Kittle answering all these questions, good intel on 49er Seahawks, but he has to do it wearing a UCLA helmet. The second time this has happened to Kittle this year, Iowa also lost to Iowa State. So Brock Purdy made Kittle wear an Iowa State helmet earlier this year. But this time it is the gold helmet with the blue font, UCLA. <laughs> Oh, you look great. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. Another, another bit Story of rivalry, I was. I'm just assuming. <laughs> I'm just a big Bruins fan this week. Uh, yeah, no, the Hawks did not get it done in, uh, against UCLA. So uh, both Brindle and one of our equipment managers put me up to this one. This feels better than Iowa State, though, I will say. <laughs> Significantly better. That Big Ten rivalry goes deep, though, with UCLA, doesn't it? You know, speaking of Big Ten rivalries, have you guys seen Peter Volmet right behind you? I know, Wisconsin lost 42-10. to 10. That's tough. You look good, Pete. I look better. All right, any other football questions? How do you feel going into this matchup against the Seahawks? Um, always excited to play a division rival. Um, I know Seattle's... They are... They won in six, anybody, in their last six? So whenever you're playing a team who has high aspirations preseason and you know started the season off well, um, like their backs are against the wall, you know, kind of how ours have been the past couple of weeks. And when you go against a team like that, very dangerous, probably gonna take more risks, um, you know, try to uh, more chunk plays, trick play, fake punt, that type of stuff. And Seattle, um, I mean, specifically like the last couple of years, they've kind of had our number with some fake special teams plays and so, um, I'm not in the special teams meeting, so I don't know what we're doing for that, but I just got to kind of be on guard with everything. And, um, uh, you know, just looking forward to our offense continuing. Like, just we're going to be better on third downs. We're going to be better in the, in the red zone. And, uh, you know, it's a huge NFC matchup for us and in the division. So it's um, people throw around must win, but, you know, it's one of those we dropped two already in the division, so we kind of have to win this one. A couple of throws by your quarterback. That you have to just continue to be impressed by him. The, the one to you in the end zone that he kept alive, and then that one where he threw to the spot to Christian that he was able to go run under that. Yes, the spot to Christian was absolutely crazy because he threw that when Christian was like four yards downfield. You agree, Christian? Very good throw. Ah, very good throw. <laughs> Tough catch, too. Christian caught that. Uh, it was beautiful. Uh, and then, yeah, the one to me, I mean, he was alive for more than eight seconds, so... And then to give me a chance and put it in the back of the end zone where no one else had a chance at it, those are those are absolutely you know massive plays. Those are Pro Bowl All Pro plays. Those are you know uh, especially just keeping the play alive. And you know that was a huge play in the game too. Seven minutes left, we kind of need to score a touchdown and just to give me an opportunity. And it's one because it's, it's awesome because I have a, having that great relationship and having him trust me. But just for him to have the guts to throw that ball is huge. When you catch passes at the beginning of practice and, and your tight end coach is draped all over you, like, are you simulating those those plays in the rest of the game? Yeah, like, we always just try to, like, because usually during a special teams period, like, some guys don't do stuff, which is totally fine. That's whatever you want to do. But my tight ends coach said, hey, let's try to get something out of this 10 minutes. And whether that's, like, contested catches, what we call them, over the shoulder for those deep passes, back shoulder passes. We do, uh, you know, toe touches on the sideline, which I've somehow gotten a couple of those this year. And then um, just like stepping back to the ball is the other one that we do. So just four things that you can happen in every, any single game, any practice. You just try to get as many reps of those as you can throughout the week. George, when you say somehow toe tap, I mean, you, you obviously work on it. I close like, my eyes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like how, how, how have you kind of evolved in, in terms of getting better in that? And has it paid off? Um, it's a combination of working at it, you know, every every once, twice a week uh, for the last three years with my tight ends coach, Brian Fleury, and a combination of just, uh, you know, pretty trusting me and just giving me an opportunity because, you know, if you don't get an opportunity to catch those footballs and you guys never get to see them, there's never any highlights or anything like that. So just uh, that relationship with Purdy, I think, is a big big part of it, just getting those targets, getting those ops. How, how, how did that relationship kind of 
you know, kind of quickly evolved? Because you, your production in terms of touchdowns has gone way up since, since he took That's been nice. Yeah. It's been really fun. Um, well, one, I'd say, I think a tight end, like a vet tight end is always like a security blanket for a young quarterback. And then, um, and, you know, Coach Shannon has a great job when you have Debo, IU, Jawan, Chris McCaffrey, like there's a lot of, while well, there's a lot of mouths to feed, it's kind of hard to double team anybody. And I do a pretty good job versus man coverage. And so anytime that we get that, uh, I get a lot of ops, and anytime we get pressure looks, a lot of those pressure looks go to like usually me or Debo, and so Brock does a really good job of avoiding pressure and giving us, you know, you guys saw the one where he had like two hot, and he threw a nice one over the middle of the Debo, and then one to me, so we just get those opportunities, and like when you take advantage of those and you make the most of those opportunities, Brock has that trust in you, and he's just going to keep slinging it because he has a ton of confidence. You guys take so much uh, pride in the way that you run the ball. Tired? She's the least. Um, I think you had 75 yards rushing against the Bucks, and that's like the first time in more than 20 games that you didn't have a, even 100. Does, does those games kind of stick in your craw a little bit? Because I mean, you seem to have so much pride in the way you run the ball. Um, yes and no. Like, I always want to run for over 100 yards. But at the same time, you have to be honest with, with yourself and be like, hey, is there anything I could have done better to help the run game? Uh, I thought the Titans had a pretty good run game uh, this mm -hmm. past week. Um, and so... Wow, there's, I don't know how much more I could have done. Like, you're wide in defensive ends as much as you can. Um, you know, guys got to make plays sometimes. And you've seen, you know, Chris has broken like three tackles, spun it, and ran 75 yeah. yards. That helps you get to 100. But, you know, it's as long as you can run the ball efficiently and, you know, stay on the field and not have a bunch of negative yards, I'm okay with that. And, yeah. um, I'd prefer to be over 100. It's way more fun, way more exciting. Um, but, you know, we're just going to continue to try to get a little bit better and uh, to continue to move outside linebackers. How much do you enjoy the, the 35 to 40 carry games? I mean, you've talked they're about fantastic. it before, but for, for all you're doing receiving game, it seems like you almost enjoy that as much. Uh, well, when you have 35 to 40 runs, it usually means that you're winning. Yeah. It means that you're staying on the field. That means you have the time of possession. Uh, it means you're converting third downs. And so that means you're playing winning football when you run the ball 35 to 40 times. Um, I don't know, I'm pretty sure our statistic of winning, too, is probably yeah, like 90-something percent. Yeah. Uh, when we have that many runs and so while yes having like 150 yards receiving and two touchdowns is fantastic and your fantasy coaches love you uh winning's really fun and um 35 rushes and when christian has multiple touchdowns and 150 yards and our backup running back has 75 yards those are fantastic games do you feel you're playing the best football of your career this season um yes and no um honestly my run tape hasn't been my favorite i played pretty crappy against dallas in the run game and um, so there's just always things that you can work on. And so not the cleanest. I think the receiving stuff is doing really well. I'm just getting a ton of targets in the red zone. So the stats always jump out at you. Um, you know, I, I do appreciate having like you know, whatever 40 something targets by week eight, nine, 10, whatever that is. So the passing game's doing really well, uh, but to definitely play better, which is kind of fun to know. George, do you get, do you Last need one? to be uh, personally a bigger part of the pass game without IU for the rest of the way? Say it one more time. So this helmet's a, blocking my head. Yeah, do you need to be a bigger part of the pass game the rest of the way because there is no IU? Do I need to be? Yeah. Um, whatever my whatever my team needs me to be, man. If I need 10 targets a game, if I need two targets a game, whatever it is, uh, as long as I play the best of my ability, I know I'm helping this team win. All right. Thanks, George. Thanks, thanks George. guys. Thanks, George.